Hi. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just started recording just in case I forget. Um, I don't know if you see like the top bar that I'm recording. I see that you're recording. Nice. Okay. So, sorry. What were you saying? Uh, I didn't hear your question. I'm sorry. I'm not so familiar with, with the intentional Malaysian. So, it's your brainchild. Yes. Uh, my friend and I. So, but today it's just me for now. Um. Well. I think maybe a good way to start is for me to tell you what what we're trying to do, right? I guess that's the best way to start. Uh, initially, we started off. Um, oh, by the way, I'm Shazwan. Sorry, Hello. that should be better. Um, so I started off this with the intention of uh, sort of sharing stories about Malaysians worldwide. Um, have you heard of Kita Oki? I don't know. Yes. Oh, is yeah, that so you guys? Started... No, 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 no. But ah. the they sort of started a, a little bit later than us, so they started to like post pictures of people, kind of like humans of New York style, kan? So we wanted to take humans of New York but make it into a video. Um, so one minute bite size interviews with different Malaysians from different parts of the world where we travel um, uh, and things like that. So it was more like to expose people on where actually all of us are. Because for example, in the UK, there's about 17,000 of us. And the US is about 12,000 and like Turkey, Egypt. So it's like a lot of Malaysians everywhere. But I didn't know that personally. So I thought it'd be a good place to start just to share stories. Is it okay if I asked you why you started Ringgit or Ringgit? It started... I've always been interested in personal finance. Like always, always. Um, the first time I tracked my expenses was when I was 17. Um, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> And I still have the book. Um, you know, I was I was also an exchange student to Japan during that time, and um, I received you know like spending money from my parents, um, and so I budgeted and I tracked down each and every single one of my spending. So you know my allowance would last for the whole year, um, and then after that came back. Um, you know because of all the interactions with uh, with you know um, people of different nationalities, I think that's what. Uh, encourage me to um, move out of my parents' house. Um, so I've been, I think, living outside of my parents' house most of the time since I was 18 or since at least 20, like that. Um, so you just have to, like, while working, while studying, so I just have to, like, make sure that every ringgit counts, right? Um, and I was getting a lot of my personal finance information from from American personal finance blog, from from UK, from um, from Australia, and then I noticed that there were not so many information catering for Malaysians. Um, so I got frustrated, <laughs> and I just started. You know what? If no one's gonna do this, I'm gonna do it. Uh, nice. I can do it. Yeah. No. Um, in the beginning, it was it was horrible because no experience in um, doing website whatsoever. Um, my first website was actually called Chicken Floss Bun, uh, which has no okay. relation, no branding <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> it, it, it tanked, no strategy, you know, just kind of like, just put them out, out there. Um, and then just kind of like, okay, you know what, let's do another try because still, I still wanted this kind of information. And somehow I feel that, um, it could be an interesting place for people to check out, if at least for like ego boosting purposes. Um, <laughs> it's true, um, and I've always been kind of like shy about this aspect of myself. Like, oh, okay, I don't want people to think that I'm stingy or anything. I don't want people to think like, no, everyone else online is just like showing up what they bought, showing up where they go. You know, there's a lot of like, oh, here's what I did and here's what I purchased. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to talk about like more like, oh, look at this amazing dress that I got for like 30 bucks. <laughs> you know, I want a place like where I can write about save, that yeah. kind of things. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I decided to just like, okay, you know what? Uh, they, they should be, I was reading a lot of these things online. They say that. Um, no matter any topic, the, there are people who think more or less like you, and I trusted on that, so I started writing about it and um, started, you know, taking all this uh, branding thing seriously, actually applying what I learned um, in uni, um, and then it just kind of um, grew from there. 
Um, and of course, um, when I started the website, I was also a freelance writer concurrently. So I was also learning on the job how to write SEO articles, how to do graphics, how to do, you know, like user friendly UX, um, all those things just just improve my skills um, tremendously. So it the, the financial blog part and the work part kind of work hand in hand, like one of them, like the writing part, I got my, my clients from the blog and the blog helped me find clients because I learned what I, what I, you know, from, 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 from my writing jobs and I apply inside the website. So it's like a very nice, like symbiosis, Balance, yeah. <laughs> symbiosis thing. Nice. You just watch Venom, yeah? Uh, <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, so, sorry, uh, I had, I had a thought. So, uh, yeah you how did you sort of um so ah here's the question sorry uh so you you are now also a personal uh sorry a freelance writer and also a blogger or is your full-time job something else hello oh. cat <laughs> that's lemon by the way he's a an annoying one um uh right your question is sorry your question is about so like your your ringgit or ringgit is it like your side hustle or is that like your main thing and like or is it like like you said concurrent with your freelance writing or do you have like a like a main main job and then you do freelance and ringgit or ringgit? I'm a self-employed communication consultant, uh, which is a fancy way of saying freelance writer. Um, <laughs> uh, the blog was and still is a hobby that I monetize. Um, but again, it's the hobby that makes me money. So I enjoy it. Um, I'm going to keep doing it until I get sick of it. Um, so far, so good. So, but my main job is um, freelance writing. Okay, okay. Like, to dive into the ringgit or ringgit part, like, why, um, like how did you figure out sort of how to monetize it? How did you find the strategy? Because obviously, you, like you said, you're just learning on a job because you're a writer by, like, definition so you have to figure out how to make a website you gotta figure out did you make the website yourself yes ah there you go so you gotta make the website then you gotta know where to put the ads where to put the let's say if you have affiliates or all the things so like how did you like um figure that out you know online resources are an amazing thing <laughs> google is amazing uh <laughs> And when you are not when when as you are learning on the job, right? Um, yeah. You tend to come across um, materials that before this you kind of like just like whoop, went over your head, and now you're looking at it. Oh, I know that term. I should click on that article, and then they say something that's useful. I'm like, ah, okay, I should apply that, and it's just you know applying one thing one day at a time, um, and just kind of like build it up. It when they say that the whole building up part does not come overnight it really does not come overnight there's so many times when i feel that oh this is such a crappy website and no one's gonna come and no one's gonna understand how you know how i'm how i'm writing this article or like maybe the flow um, isn't isn't good enough or the the graphics isn't good enough so getting all those feedback and having a blog and you know, getting people's feedback on it um, really helps a lot in improving the whole process. So to answer your question, um, how I monetize it is basically coming across other personal finance websites and other online resources that say, oh, I inserted this um, strategy and now it's making me X amount of money. Or I would also read uh, personal finance websites from people who share their blog income reports. Mm -hmm. you know and they would put you know oh from referrals i'm earning x amount per month from selling my um e-courses I'm, I'm earning this much and from selling my um coaching uh courses i'm earning this much um so and then you would be like ah, okay so i can also add maybe that component the the referrals into products that maybe i am promoting anyway like might as well um and that's just how it goes along Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, how long ago actually did you start um, Ringgit or Ringgit? I was I mean, on... Well, actually, let, the better question would be, how long ago did you start Chicken Floss Bun? 
And then how long <laughs> after that you started ringgit or ringgit? That's a better question. I can't remember when I did chicken pot bun. Uh, and before that, I also had a tumbler, which I'm not going to share. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> uh, it was just, you know, like all throughout my 20s, um, since early 20s, I've always like been, again, in the beginning, it was just like, oh, shy, shy, do it anonymously. I don't want my peers to think that I'm stingy with money. Um, and then after that, you, you, as you know, as you see like feedback of people actually kind of like enjoying those posts, I'd be like, ah, so people don't mind that I'm this kind of person. Cool. I'm gonna post more ways that I save money. Hopefully, they will like that too. Um, so to answer your question, it's always been like on and off, um, but doing it in like a proper like website. Um, Ringgit Ringgit started in December 2015, so it's been almost three years now. And what is like the main method you grow it with? Do you find key SEOs, or do you go through a lot through social media? Like which is the most like you get your readers from like how like how do they discover you because i think also mm-hmm. a lot of um people who blog they kind of don't know like oh yeah should i ask like uh should i put it on a social media post it all the time or find key seos or or, or uh, do ads you know things like that because it's a bit messy i think so like your from your experience what was like your best way to like get your readers up i guess I, I actually saw the breakdown from Google Analytics. I hooked it up with my website. Seventy uh, percent comes from tra- from organic traffic, so that's from Google. Okay. Uh, roughly about fifteen, ten, fifteen percent comes from direct. Another ten, fifteen percent comes from social media, from Facebook and Twitter. So not a lot. So the overwhelming majority is from organic traffic. Oh. So and organic in traffic. To what you yeah. said about um how you get um you know uh, how what kind of topics to write for example right um and I think that I learn this as I go along but the more that you answer commonly Google questions which is yeah. which, which was something that I've been doing like all my life anyway like I would Google for stuff couldn't find them um. So and then and then only you know I decided to do this website thing. So I had all this experience of knowing what kind of search terms that people who are interested in money in Malaysia would Google for or would look for, but uh, those kind of information are not available online. So I had that prior experience. Um, it's all about answering people's questions and and delivering content that that answers those questions. Okay, that's a very interesting take because. When we start, because we started off Instagram, obviously, um, uh, and we answer a lot of questions on a daily. It's just that we never actually publish these questions. We mostly we get a lot of DMs, and we sometimes keep it private. I think it's a good idea if we actually answer it and publicly. Let's say, um, yeah, it's a good take. Um, you don't have to answer it publicly. You could also make like, a, for example, um, well, you focus on Instagram. So I'm still learning how to use Instagram right now. But in your video content, for example, or if you're doing a website in the future, knowing all of these uh, questions, you can make, you know, like um, top questions from students studying abroad um, and do like a long ass content. Uh, or video content, article or video content, answering those questions. For example, how to get scholarships. I would imagine it will get so many of those type of questions. You're right, you're right. I mean, I, because a lot of our view, a lot of our videos that we do is a purely entertainment and hence I'm sort of diverging to more half, maybe like 30% entertainment and 70% more value added um, videos. Mm-hmm. So hence this sort of interview and um, maybe more of like the things that you said, how to get scholarships. I think I'm going to make a little bit of vlog and also a little bit of video because videos are really hard to make. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. And like you have to be present to do it. So it's like, yeah. you know, uh, very difficult. Um, 
but yeah, I think uh, I think in terms of like the video thing, I think we're done.